everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you're located in the world. Uh, I am Sean Sylvie. Today, we're going to be talking about the ABCs of indoor air quality. Uh, this is a big concern right now with uh, everything happening in the world. Uh, and Fluke has a presentation to discuss some of the tools that we can help uh, either with your HEPA filtration systems or your uh, micro manometer systems where you're getting uh, indoor uh, different bear, differential uh, pressures in the different rooms. Uh, so again, thanks for being here. We're going to run through a presentation and uh, there will be questions throughout. If you have any questions on this, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, typically, these would be done at the end or even during the presentation, but we'll kind of run with it how it is. So good morning again and good afternoon, depending on where you're at. So let's talk about the uh, indoor air quality in general. You know, the background of indoor air quality is, you know, indoor air quality has been a problem for many years. This is not normal. I mean, this is not a new conversation. Uh, they had indoor air problems uh, throughout time. If you, we joke the caves, igloos, those all had air vents. They all had some type of indoor air quality that's going on. We didn't identify that until later on, uh, but there was something uh, along those lines. You know, um, but when that happened, their regulations started happening. You know, there's uh, not too many regulations. I mean, uh, Hong Kong, Korea, they have indoor air quality, indoor air quality laws. Uh, but the U.S., uh, the regulations are uh, a little a bit looser. Uh, there's not a lot with uh, some of that. I mean, in general, indoor air quality, um, the conversation it should be, you know, there are certain levels with obviously carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. And uh, with that feeling of, you know, how do you feel when you're in a room? You know, and, and speaking of that, you know, the sensitivities for people can be great or loose. Some people are very sensitive to some of that. Uh, some people can go in and not feel any of that at all. So let me go ahead and uh, show you what ASHRAE says. Now, ASHRAE is an organization that helps with your, your indoor air quality and those feelings. You know, air in which there are known, known contaminants at harmful com concentrations and with which a substantial majority, usually 80% of the people exposed, do not express dissatisfaction. And that was something that I just spoke about, how a lot of people don't typically feel that. Uh, when there is air quality problems, you know, there's air, air contaminants are always present in these environments. And, but that amount can vary different, you know, it differs depending on your uh, outdoor environments. So these can vary uh, and fluctuate just depending on what's happening on the outside or what's on the inside. But you know, a lot of these are based on many factors, whether it's a, uh, some type of contamination your air filtration can be a huge part of that. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff that's happening between the outside and the inside of your environments. But I wanted to say that, you know, these are standards now for your indoor air quality. Uh, we typically go by ASHRAE, and here are some of the standards that you can see on part of that. Now there are common parameters, common problems that happen. A lot of these are your temperature or your humidity. And we get into some deeper ones with carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. You have uh, fungal and bacterial agents and as well as particulates that are in, in the air. You know, here's some kind of brief standards on that where on your temperature, these are kind of the good fill zones for people when they're in that area. Uh, with your carbon dioxide, you know, you don't want to be above a certain limit. And same with carbon monoxide, you know, typically zero is the most that you want to have but you could have up to nine parts per million for, you know, an eight hour period of that accumulation. Uh, again, you know, carbon monoxide is a no, no, it's the silent killer. So we don't want that one to ever be, you know, very high, but there is always going to be fungal and bacterial agents in the air or in your environment. And then there's always particulates. Um, I like to, to say like in the West, you can see on a sunny day and see all the particles just in the air when the sun's shining through it versus when you're in the shadows. Quite interesting. 
So let's get into particulates because these can be referenced on their size. Um, as you can see on this, one micron is one and basically a size of one twenty-five thousand four hundredth of an inch. Uh, typically, the naked eye can't see it. Um, these are very, very, very small, obviously. Now, the US, uh, the US EPA considers a particulate to, that has a minimum size between one to three microns as coarse. And uh, these are mentioned in like mechanical breakdowns of your solids and stuff. So, and a good example of that would be like your mold spores, your dust mites, uh, pollen. Those are typically large, uh, large sizes. Where you get into your fine particles, you're going to have stuff that's, uh, you know, the maximum on that size is one to three microns. And these are very, very uh, fine particles. You know, these particles tend to settle out in the environment <clears throat> uh, with the exception of small fibers, as is in this example, such as lint. Uh, they usually be only become airborne when it's windy. Uh, typically, they'll just drop to the surface. So uh, particle behavior with less than 10 microns, you know, again, they settle out in the air. I think this one, uh, it, you know, it's basically like gas molecules, they're going to be in motion uh, around in the air. Again, uh, 0.1 microns make up about 80% of the particulates, but they only contribute about 1% of the mass. That's a, a great uh, analogy of that because the smaller you have, the, the greater that you're going to accumulate, especially in a particle counter, where the larger ones are going to be less. Now, a good example of some of these is going to be, you know, like bread mold, as you can see in here, very small particles, as well as table salt bacteria, and you can see on some of those. Now, general characteristics of this is that uh, particle sizes up to 10 microns, you're going to see, you know, some type of shape, but they must be about 2.5 microns or less to be considered respirable. What that means is uh, being able to breathe them into your, your lungs. Uh, total suspension, these particulate sizes are up to 100 microns. So the key thing on this is you're on particle counting in these applications is what is those indoor to outdoor relationships? You know, where's that source generation come from? And then how are we removing that typically with your filters? Uh, is there remediation or renovation monitoring going on? You know, special diagnostic procedures happening. And a lot of these are at, you know, accessible to HVAC systems. And this is where the 985 in particular comes into play is when you're working with your HEPA filtration systems. This will allow you to, uh, to see what was and what's been changed based on some of those uh, uh, preventative maintenance uh, things, items that you're doing within those facilities. You know, uh, the best way to check on something like this is to have the 985 particle counter. You know, this is a six channel uh, unit. This allows you to see from 0.3 microns all the way up to point uh, to 10 microns. But then you can accumulate this. You can see these in different ranges. Uh, but this unit's great. It's lightweight. It's easy to use. You can obviously see in the different particles. It's very comprehensive. And it meets requirements like the ISO 21501, you know, and it also uh, has temperature and relative humidity included in part of that. Uh, you know, we, we go back always to calculating and checking what the, uh, the filter filtration is doing in a system. You know, this unit is designed for the larger particles. A lot of your smaller viruses sty style are uh, very small. They're in the nanomicrons, which this is the type of unit that would never uh, pull this up. But again, you know, this 985 is crucial for helping identify and locating some of those larger problems where you have like the bacteria in the mold. Um, this will help evaluate your filter efficiency, determine your overall duct cleanliness, and it really does help with uh, your air quality uh, asset, assessing what those look like. And, you know, in your hospitals, your clinicals, 
uh, pharmaceutical, your clean rooms, especially even your office and homes and your fruit and beverage plants. You know, this unit's able to do that. Uh, you can identify and locate problems doing multiple tests. You're going to set this uh, unit up, run a test, do some type of um, prevention, and then come back in and see what that's done and done in the repair. Let me show you some specifications on this unit. This is an amazing unit. Like I mentioned earlier with the six uh, size channel, allows you to see up to six different uh, sizes. It's got a great flow rate on it. Uh, the way it counts, whether it's cumulative or differential. And uh, you can go in and kind of see this unit also has data storage. You can set up uh, alarms on this as well. And uh, a key on this is it's lightweight. You're able to carry this into different environments, set it up, run it, and uh, get those measurements and get out of there. Um, you know, the battery time life on this, 10 hours typical. Um, I be, it comes with a base, and a lot of times people will set this up and leave it in an environment, let it run several different types of readings, and then come back in and grab that and then start analyzing that. So probably the biggest part of this is this slide right here. This is very important for what the 985 can capture. Typically, your heavy dust and your fly ash and some of your mold spores are going to be on the larger end. And again, this on the particle size, you know, 10 is the largest. Where you can get down to C.3 is our smallest. We're still not able to get into viruses, and that's very critical during this time. It's not going to identify any of these items. Uh, typically, several tests have been accommodated to say this is the size of what something sh uh, is. Bacteria is in this size range, but the 985 does not identify that this is bacteria. It just identifies the size of this particle, which a lot of times we can accommodate that. But as you can see, bacteria, house dust, and animal dander are all relative in the same size. Uh, your cooking oil, your smoke. So being able to go in and say, well, I got this size, you can't really determine if that is animal dander or dust. You just know you have that size. So it's very important. This slide is very important to identify you do have something that you're capturing. Hopefully with your HEPA filtration systems or any type of uh, mediation on doing that, you'll be able to get these numbers in a, in a tighter realm. So I wanted to show uh, what good and what bad looks like. So, so it's in a contamination, you know, you had presence of contamination going on. You can kind of see some of the counts. You had a 22.9% of particle count that's happening in that. You had a return air supply count and their different sizes and what your supplier looked like. Now imagine if you changed your filtration system, and this is crucial on keeping that up. Notice how you're, you completely reversed it. Your return air had a high amount, but now by changing that filtration system, we're getting a lower amount. So we decreased it literally 0 0.11.60. So that's the 985. This is a crucial unit to help to go in and to make these determinations on what is, and then after changing what can be, um, helping with the filtration systems, helping with that feeling of when you're in these environments uh, and uh, feeling a little better. It's just a good self-awareness on that. Uh, the next item I wanna go into is what Fluke has for a, um, for a manometer. Now this is our 922. Now this is crucial because it allows you to have uh, differential and static pressure techs. You can do air velocity, air flow, and get temperature measurements with this. Now, the crucial on this is going to be the differential pressure. Uh, with differential pressure, it's very important that we take these measurements, especially in these uh, systems where you might need a positive pressure on one part of the room and a negative pressure on the other. This is crucial, uh, especially in the healthcare industry, where you might have some type of operating room or even a lab or even some of the pharmaceuticals where we're trying to keep a positive pressure on the inside of the room and a negative pressure on the out. Once that door is open, we don't want anything to come back into that environment. You know, healthcare room pressures uh, applications, 
you want a minimum of uh, 0 0.01, but typically you're going to see higher than that based on the HVAC system. Now, differential pressure is one part of it. Air velocity is another. Uh, I try to give some extra tips on the air velocity. Uh, typically, the kit for the 922 comes with a PO tube. And I wanted to show an example of typically when you put the PO tube into this environment, you want to make several traversed measurements to get the true airflow, air velocity of what's happening in that uh, in that tube, whether it's a square duct or a round duct. Uh, it's not just a one and done. You want to take several measurements. Uh, for more information on this, uh, just please reach out and I can get you a chart on what this looks like. So we talked about barometric pressure. We talked about all that. Let's talk about carbon monoxide. You know, carbon monoxide is uh, crucial to go in. Uh, Fluke offers the CO220 on this carbon monoxide meter, and it also has the 205, which is an aspirator that connects to the 220. This will allow you to go in and do a hand uh, walk-in, capture your carbon uh, monoxide measurements. And then also, if you need to do some flue gas measurements, you can use the aspirator kit. Get a hole in that, check what your flue gas is doing, and make some uh, analysis on that. You know, we've got several indoor air quality tools on this channel uh, for, for what will help in the environment between our particle counter, our uh, anemometer, we got our manometer, which is the 922, and then different types of whether it's a humidity tester, an IR gun, uh, sometimes your thermocouple thermometers will help with the Fluke 54-2 and our amp probe TMD-56. And then again, some uh, CO detectors where we can get in and do the, the measurements of your carbon monoxide. And last on this one is a, a gas leak detector where you might need to go in and check to see if you have any gas leaks, which is also a contaminant in the room. Uh, the, you know, the 985 and the 922 are crucial right now with the COVID-19. And I know these units could be very helpful in helping these environments and getting it all set up. I really, uh, I don't know if there's any questions on the line. I'll take a pause and see. Well, it doesn't sound like it, but I want to thank everybody who uh, attended uh, and who's going to be watching this. I think this is very crucial, and I think Fluke has the ability to truly help in these situations and these environments. Uh, stay safe out there and um, have a good day.